Goals are an excellent thing. Meet them head on and crush them with brute determination. Don't waste any time. Keep your nose to the grindstone and don't let your dreams be dreams. Just do it. Through much hard work and determination, I have successfully tried every flavor of Doritos and Mountain Dew. An impossible feat? Nothing is impossible! But their persistence is now a reality. With that being said, I am Sluggy Bug, and welcome to 15 Tips You Need to Know Before Playing H1Z1 King of the Kill. And you're not gonna stop there! No! What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! Playing H1Z1 with 10 FPS is something that is often compared to the darkest of trends within our world and has been known in some countries as a form of torture. The low FPS, causing immediate bleeding of the eyes, can make it hard to get any kills. For that reason, take a few minutes to tinker with your in-game settings to net you the best possible FPS. I also have a video that will break down and explain how to get the best possible frameage. Either way, try to have at least 30 FPS when playing as the more FPS you have, the better odds you'll have of winning fights against other players. Knowing the layout of your backpack will save you precious seconds later on. Start by going under the options and setting your inventory to appear in the middle of your screen. Just like it says, this will make your inventory screen appear smack dab right in the middle. The way your items are arranged in your backpack will never change, so it is a good idea to get a general memorization of the way everything is set up. Here we have hillables first, throwables second, helmets armor third, ammo, and so on and so forth. Here are the slots for your helmet, armor, boots, and vehicle key. And over here, you will have your weapons, backpack, waist pack, bandages, and whatever hillable item you have equipped in this slot here. You can also put Pro Crow Agulant in the slot as well, which will come in handy if you need to stop severe bleeding in a heartbeat. Sometimes one or two hit points can determine a fight, so it's a good idea to always keep your health topped off. There are two different ways to heal yourself within H1Z1. One, you can craft yourself bandages by shredding shirts and or backpacks, in turn getting scraps of cloth. After you get your cloth scraps, simply open up your crafting tab and find bandages. Hold down the E button to craft as many as you can, or just tap E once to make one. The second way of healing is by using first aids, which can be found within the world as loot. They look like tiny square shaped boxes, being blue and white in color, and they can be combined with bandages to make procoagulants. Just like bandages, you can do this through the crafting tab. It's a good idea to protect that noggin you call a head, so whenever you see helmets in game, pick them up. I suggest carrying at least two backups, as getting shot in the head, at least for me, is a common occurrence. If you aren't wearing a helmet and you get shot in the head, obviously, game over. If you are wearing one though, the helmet will fly off and you will need to equip another one very quickly. You always have a helmet on and they will save your life numerous times in every game you play. As with helmets, these will protect you from getting shot, but obviously you don't wear these on your head. Starting with laminates first, these cannot be crafted, but instead are found while running around the game. When you find one, fall to your knees, pick it up, and praise Gaben. Praise Gaben. This will guarantee you of finding more later on. Laminates aren't only more appealing than makeshift, but they will stop two bullets instead of one. Makeshifts, however, are craftable, but only offer protection against one bullet.
as mentioned previously, makeshift armor can be crafted. All you need is some duct tape, composite fabric, and armor scrap. Just like helmets, it is mandatory that you protect yourself with some sort of armor at all times because that extra hit may save your life. Plus, if you're fighting a guy with no armor, you only have to hit him 4 body shots to your 5 or 6. To get composite fabric, shred military backpacks, and to get armor scrap, shred your helmets. Each set of armor costs 1 duct tape, 2 armor scraps, and 4 composite fabric. Keep an eye out for these materials while exploring the world. When getting into a car, immediately take the car keys and biofuel. One set of keys will work universally across all vehicles, but swapping them out of cars you're hitting up may prevent another player to have a set of keys themselves. If you get into a vehicle without keys, you have the option to hotwire it, which makes a lot of noise and leaves you openly exposed. Trying to remove car parts will also take a lot of time, and of course, the biofuel will just keep your car gassed up. Each tank in a vehicle will net you 25%, while in an ATV, you will get 50. While we are on the topic of cars, this little trick may help you sneak up on your enemies. While you've got some decent speed going, or you are going downhill, kill the engine by hitting the K button. Your car will keep rolling along, making next to no noise with the exception of when you turn. Throwing the fact that you are saving biofuel as well while doing this trick makes it some pretty useful knowledge. This sidearm six shooter can devastate an opponent's car quicker than you can say. Doing eight to nine percent per shot to vehicles when using numbers in a team setting, it can get pretty ugly. This weapon being blessed by the man himself, Dirty Harry, means it has very little bullet drop, making people easier to hit from far away. Use the magnum against opponent's vehicles, especially if you are trying to keep your distance. Be aware though, a lot of players find this weapon seriously scummy. There are five different types of grenades in the game. Frag grenade, smoke grenade, molotov, stun grenade, and gas grenade. Frag grenades explode, causing damage if you are standing too close to them. Smoke grenades explode into a cloud of smoke, keeping you hidden from enemy players. Stun grenades will blind your opponent, much like a flashbang. Gas grenades will release gas in the area, causing significant damage to anybody around. And molotovs explode, catching any players around them on fire. In H1Z1, it is best to have your ears open and your ass covered because you never know who will be sneaking up behind you. Gunshots are easily heard, and when you actually face the direction of the shots, you will be able to hear the shots evenly through both headphones or speakers. This can give you a really good indication of where your enemies may be. When setting still, listen very closely for feet shuffling on the ground or boots and always listen for vehicles moving around. Both views have their advantages, so let us discuss the different situations in which you should use one or the other. Third person is great for peeking around corners, over hills, over walls, or just about any situation that calls for looking over or around something. For this reason, it is usually best to remain in third person view so you can have more vision of what's going on around you and so you can spot other players easier. Aiming in third person with rifles or pistols is also the recommended method as the AR in first person view is quite clunky and it is very hard to aim in that view. The shotgun, however, 
is the exception in this scenario as it doesn't take up much of the screen and feels much easier to aim in first person view. The shotgun which is quite often used for indoor fighting may suit the first person view playstyle a bit better in that situation. When moving around, it is best to stay close to something so you can hide behind it if you are starting to get shot at. In the cities, hug the walls, always use third person to peek around corners, and stay behind anything and everything to keep yourself from being seen. In the woods, hide behind trees and use the brush to conceal your movement. Out in the open fields, stick close to rocks and use third person to work the different angles as you look around. Try not to remain in the open too long, especially while firing your weapon, as you will more than likely get killed. When fighting other players, peek in and out of cover, popping off a few shots at a time. Never leave yourself out there too long, especially if another person is aiming at you. In neighborhoods, you will see a lot of these wooden fences as seen here. These can be driven through with the vehicle quite easily, and you can use your weapons to shoot through them as well. The shotgun takes down a fence in one shot, even from far away, but the AR or AK will take a few more bullets to do so. Within the city areas, the buildings will have these soft spots in the walls, as shown here, and you can actually shoot through these much like the fences. Simply point and shoot, and you just made yourself a new door. This may help you get the drop in your enemies, or grant you an escape route. The faster you hit the ground in H1Z1, the better. This may give you the jump on snagging a vehicle or a rifle before your enemies. <coughs> to do so, simply make your body parallel to the ground and swing your mouse in such a motion as this. Starting off, this can be hard to pull off with pinpoint accuracy, but with enough practice, it gets easier as you go. Be careful when doing this, because if you land at a funny angle, you may bounce off the ground and fly back up into the air, causing yourself to lose tons of time. In conclusion, the biggest tip I can offer up is to have fun, and of course, the best way to improve is just by playing the game. It can be rather aggravating at times, but those games where you go on a tear make it totally worth it. I may do more tips videos in the future, so keep an eye out for those. My name is Sluggybug, and this is the part where I say thank you for watching, and have a great night.